Hey gorgeous, this is episode number 310 and we have the amazing Paul Higgins back on the show today. Hello, this is Paul Higgins and you are listening to Heart Cells, podcast with Christine Shalonsky. Please enjoy. And I'm Christine Schlonsky, the host of Heart Cells Podcast, where I talk with inspirational, heart-centered entrepreneurs and business leaders about how they have built a wildly successful business. And in many cases, had to overcome their challenges in selling their products and services. Past guests include Bob Burke, John Lee Dumas, Natalie Latville, Kate Erickson, Susie Carter, Andrea Waltz, Ian Altman, just to name a few. I'm so super pumped that I have Paul Higgins back on the show today. I loved our conversation about high performance sales by building relationships. And today we are going to go deep into the four pillars to build a thriving business. And Paul is going to reveal his system to us so that you can build a business that is wildly successful, where you actually can build, live and give. This episode is brought to you by Heart Cells Academy, where we support heart-centered, ambitious entrepreneurs who love what they do, but don't really like or love the selling part to redefine sales so they can exponentially grow their business and impact while creating the lifestyle and freedom they are looking for. So if selling just does not feel good to you and therefore it holds you back in creating a wildly successful business and lifestyle of your dreams, then contact us at team at christineschlonsky.com and let's have a chat about how we can support you, your impact and business growth. Hop on over to christineschlonsky.com to learn more. I'm so looking forward to dive into this episode now with the wonderful Paul Higgins. Paul is a high performance business mentor, podcaster and author who helps service based business owners struggling to strike a balance between life and work, adopt a hands off management approach and improve profits to fund their lifestyles. To aid other service-based business owners like himself, who have come to the conclusion that having a business so reliant on them is just not going to work. Paul developed a mentoring program, Build, Live, Give, that helps such business owners take control and implement an end-to-end -end sales and operations system that can easily generate profits. I'm so super excited to dive in with Paul. So let's get started. Well, I'm so excited to have you back on the show, Paul. Welcome. Thanks, Christine. Yeah, I loved our first episode and you already, you know, delivered some golden nuggets and I know there are more that I need <laughs> to get from you today. So you mentioned in the last episode, you mentioned the four pillars of your framework. Can we just go into the framework and you let us know how you work and why it's so effective so people can get an idea how they can use it for their business? Yeah, so the context is I left, you know, in the last episode, if you've listened to that, I left Coke in 2011, so nine years in business. And the first five years I found really difficult running my own business, I've got to say. Uh, I talked about how natural I was at sales always have been but selling myself <laughs> I found a lot harder than selling any other product I've done and if I'm sure that, uh, some of you listening now would feel the same way so I actually um, when I was on dialysis uh, in between uh, uh, my kidney removal and my transplant I decided to write a book and the book really was just a reflection for me on all the things I wish I had have done that I'd learned through my journey And that's now, uh, it was five, now it's four key pillars that I've come up with. And uh, I'll just quickly talk top line. So the first is unpack the foundations. And that's really about looking at what you've got versus what you need. So I spoke about that with the assessment, but it's really taking that. And then I also think there's two key elements that everyone uh, needs to really um, implement strategy, which is, you know, you need to have a team like a virtual assistant, I think is incredible, incredibly important. And the other is the right technology to tap into that. So once you've got that and you know what to do, then we go through the business model. Then we look at, you know, sales, because I still believe 
you know, you have to do sales if you're a seven-figure service-based business owner, but you don't have to do all of sales. And then the last one is high-performing team. And that's when you bring in, you know, in today's world, you can bring in experts all over the world. I've got 471 experts that if someone says, Paul, I need an expert in this particular thing, I'm like, well, here it is. And I do think now, you you know, there's ways that you can work with remote people, whether experts or your direct team, because let's face it, post-COVID, you know, um, I think someone said the other day that the amount of property that's up for lease in Los Angeles and San Francisco is is uh, is astronomical because of COVID. People just aren't going to go back. If Google's not going to go back to sometime next year, you know, there's a lot of businesses that won't. So that's that's the four pillars in essence, which is really back engineering all my learnings from from running my own businesses and uh, having a successful exit of one of them. Yeah, awesome. I, I love the foundation and I, I, I personally would love more to know about teams, but this is not my show, so to speak. It's for my audience. And I feel they still have this sales struggle, right? Sometimes it might work. They talk to their soulmate client and it's easy. And then sometimes it, it's not. So can we go into your sales pillar? Um, I feel we, we would get most out of this. Yeah, great. Well, look, I've got 11 key things, but the uh, first is marketing assets. And, you know, to me, I think you've got to have a killer marketing asset. And as an example, that's like my book, which is Build, Live, Give, the same as the company name. I've got my podcast, which is Build, Live, Give. But I think you need a point of difference these days that is your asset. It's, it, you know, your, you own it and you can leverage it. And I think a lot of people find it hard because they're doing all the hard work themselves. Whereas a book, a podcast can be selling for you when you're asleep, as they say. So I think that's the, the first one I think is absolutely critical. So what would you say for someone, let's say someone is starting out or they're in their first or second year, would you recommend writing a book or creating a podcast? Look, if in the first or second year, I'd get on other people's podcasts, just like I'm very lucky to be on yours today. So I think that's probably the first place I'd start. But, you know, you can come up with an ebook, or you can come up with a, a masterclass, you know, a webinar masterclass, I call them a masterclass. But I think you can come up with those assets fairly easily before you can go to a book or a podcast. Because as you know, uh, Christine, doing a, a podcast, it is a labor of love. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You said that very beautifully. <laughs> I 100% agree. It is a labor of love <laughs> because, it, you know, when you're listening right now, you hear the end result, <laughs> but you don't see and hear what's, you know, what it has taken to get from A to B. Um, and yes, it's a labor of love and we, and we both love it, right? You have an amazing yes. podcast. And I, I love that. And I just want to come back because you mentioned the assessment. So in the yes. last episode, you gave us the free gift um, of your assessment. And it's all about, will you have a low or high seven-figure service business in 2021? Um, can you let us a little bit more about this? Because I feel it's so re relevant to sales. And before we go to other pillars um, or other points in the sales pillar, what are people getting when they go to take your assessment? Yeah, so, you know, I've got the four pillars that I went through and under that there's 29 components. So 11 in sales and then there's, you know, different numbers other under either. And what I've done is taken the most essential questions out of those 29. So I've made 15 questions and it's really just helping you assess, have you got, the right elements in place, given my 18 years history at Coca-Cola, given my nine years of business, including selling a business and me mentoring about 270 people. It's taking all of that and saying, look, I know a pattern that works. It's, it's fairly simple. Have you got those key elements in place? Mm. And it will, uh, at the end of the quiz, it'll give you a, a score. There's four percentage brackets. And then there's an opportunity to see a, a masterclass, which I take you through the framework in a bit more detail. And for those people that have absolutely nailed it, they get the chance 
to come on my podcast and share their knowledge with with our audience. Oh, that's that's a pretty nice incentive. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Thank you. So you said get your marketing um, asset. Yes. So when you know when when I started out, I didn't even see my marketing asset because I was looking out of my eyes. Everything that was simple and easy for me was very difficult for other people, but I didn't realize it. Do you have some advice of how I can really get clear on what my marketing asset truly is? Because it might be something else than what I'm, what I'm thinking. Yeah, look, I think the easiest way to validate is just through conversations. So, you know, every time I've said to some people, just keep it as simple as every time you have a sales conversation, just write down the key themes and the key words that you hear from people. And that if there's the consistency of the topics That's what you could do a masterclass to. That's what you could write an ebook to. You know, it, it really comes from your clients. And to be honest, in the first five years, I spent too long because I'm a I'm a ideas guy. I've always got a million ideas. I was kept coming up with my ideas, hoping that someone would buy it. And everyone knows that classic tale. But you know, I just did that. Whereas I think if you start with the, really identifying your ideal client, because that's part of The, the process, identify your ideal client, find out their needs and then just meet those. And the other thing is just test things, right? You're one or two years in, you know, you've got all the right in the world to be testing things, you know, because it is going to take you 10 years to become an overnight success. I can't wait for my overnight success <laughs> next year. <laughs> well, I was, I was celebrating with you. <laughs> 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 That's so fun. So what, what other um, steps or points are in that sales pillar? You mentioned 11. So we yeah, yeah. So marketing assets, one. The, the next is the sales growth mindset. And I think we covered some of that in the, uh, the first episode. But it really is about letting go of those fears. And I think a lot of it is role plays. I think role plays used to work really well within um, corporate at Coca-Cola, we did them all the time, but just practice it. It doesn't matter who you practice it with, but, you know, practice getting confident in what you do. And, and a lot of people are saying, oh, look, you know, I don't want to sell, etc." But so, but if you know that you can genuinely help someone, you know, don't, don't let them down, you know, you're letting yourself down, but most importantly, don't let them down. Because if you can really help them and you don't give them that opportunity, I think it's a, a missed missed opportunity. So that's the key thing around sales growth mindset. So why, why are, do you recommend for a business owner to know sales or do you, because you also teach how to grow teams, couldn't I just outsource it? Look, it depends what sort of business you've got. Okay. So for who I target, so I started uh, with more coaches and consultants it was sort of under a million dollars. Now I'm sort of in that next seven figure, which is, you know, your one to 10 million. I think, you know, if people are buying you and you're somehow involved in the service, I think you've got to be selling it. Uh, I don't think you can bring someone in and they just don't have the passion. They don't have the experience. And to be honest, you're not going to learn enough to actually put back in your marketing either. So I think it has to be you to begin with. You can, I'll talk, you know, the, the last one that I'll talk through on the these uh, sales focus steps actually talks about how you can reduce a lot of what you do in sales. But I think the, the calls and the Zoom calls now, which, you know, Zoom's become a, a new word, let's have a Zoom. Like it used to be, I've got an iPhone, even if you've got a set. <laughs> Samsung. Uh, but yeah, I think, you know, it's critical that you do that. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you. I just wanted to have your perspective on that because I know so many people who just love what they do. And if they could get rid of the sales piece, they would do it in a heartbeat. But they're also missing all these points. Like how will you teach a salesperson what to say, how to say it? So it's in your voice. It's true to your values. It reflects your product and it really gets the customer or the potential client. I feel you have to understand it. Then when your company grows and you can't do all the sales calls yourself anymore, then it makes sense because then you can train other people in a way you like to have it done. Yeah, and I think, and I think people these days are, are, are looking and rewarding more authenticity, right? We're sick of the automation and the bombardment. Like, I do a lot of work on LinkedIn, get very 
very successful results. But now I'll send a connection request, but then I'll do a personalized video to people to break that noise because we're all sick of the spam that comes in our inboxes. Yeah. So I think you've just got to be you and be authentic. And the other thing which we'll talk about is you do need some skills as well because I think ultimately sales is mindset, skills, and systems. And I think your mindset improves once you've got the skills and systems you know, if it's all mindset, I, I don't think that's the best approach. Yeah. But yeah, obviously you, ha you have need to have some strategies, but you also need to be capable to execute that your mindset is not in your way. <laughs> Correct. Correct. So what, what other points do we get? Yeah. So the third is our new client prospecting. And really the key there is to have a uh, uh, you know, most people rely on referrals and that's brilliant word of mouth referrals. And, and certainly if you're new in business, that's going to be your best approach. And I think if you're in corporate or you're looking to leave, I think, you know, really make sure you've got those people that will look after you. I had some friends at the start that were in corporate that helped me. That made a massive difference. But then you've got to get your own consistent sales pipeline. And I think at the moment for service-based business owners, I think LinkedIn is brand, as I said before. And I think in LinkedIn, there's really key, three key things. There's your profile, your posts, and then your prospecting or what I call possibilities. And, you know, most of us now, when my, I, I certainly know for me, I'd love it to be the other way around, but my profile, LinkedIn ranks above my website in Google. And I've got 15,000 followers. You know, I get uh, several well, tens of thousands, sometimes hundreds of thousands of views to my posts. But you need your profile to be very, very clear what you do and stand. I always say it's not filling a stadium, it's filling one row in the stadium. So, you know, you're inviting specific people to, to work with you, not everyone. Then do posting so you can give value. I think that's a great way now. I've had 2 million views in the last 12 months you know, I definitely have not had that exposure anywhere else and giving guests like you, you'll you give me the opportunity to, to spread their word. And then finally, the outreach. And I think the biggest one, as I said, with outreach at the moment is uh, using video, I think, um, is what you've got to do. If you're still sending scripted uh, messages, you're really paddling uh, up the proverbial yeah. So I, I just can hear some people in my audience think, oh, video, oh, like me, camera, <laughs> it's not going well. What do I say in a video? How, how do I make an impact? How, I yeah. mean, like, do you have a software that you use? Like what, what advice could you give people who are a bit fearful, but still would love to give this a try? Yeah, great. Look, I think, you know, the thing that, a simple tip that's worked for me is to do it sitting rather than standing. I know that may, might, may sound too obvious, but to me, if you're relaxed and talking to people on Zoom all the time, all you've got to do is, the, you know, is just take that into a video set, the person you're imagining, the person on the other end, but you're doing it every day anyway, right? So it's not a big step now. So don't you know, stand up in front of your iPhone and you know, get your script and you get all nervous to me, just be natural as you are having a call and like I'm having with this podcast. So I think that's the first thing. Second thing is test. You know, just, just keep binning stuff. So do it every day, make it a, a habit, and then just bin the bad stuff, keep the good ones. And then the third one is you're having a simple platform. So we use Dub, D-U-double-B, -B, and that's a great platform. You can insert your little videos in LinkedIn or in your email. And I think having a platform like that helps. And the last key point is just have a simple setup. So for me, I've got a, a Logitech. Uh, I've just got a new webcam because the one in my old Mac is, is, is terrible. And I've just got a light that I've just bought a newer 660L light. And, you know, that just makes you feel better when you're the camera. And uh, the last point, which is very personal, if you've got a big red nose like me, just make sure you put a bit of powder on. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that one. <laughs> so, so now I, I have an idea. So I can, you know, I can send these little videos in a bit um, easily. But what do I say? Especially when I, you know, when the outreach is called, like. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so if I, um, oh, sorry to cut you no, no, I'm just wondering, I look up my potential client, I see, well, this person could be a match. Yeah. Uh, 
let's just say, you know, I'm looking for a coach that I want to support to get to six figures and, and yes. beyond. How, how do I do this? And then for everybody else, fill in whatever your blank. Um, yeah, yeah. Look, great question. So the simple way I do it is I do research first. So, you know, I look at their profile, I look at their company page, I look at their posts, I look at their website. So I do some research first. Then what I do is open up their profile on LinkedIn and I show the, I have the message box open as well saying, this is how I contacted you and this is why I contacted you. And, you you know, you say, hi, you know, I'm putting a face to the name. I'm not a, a bot. This is me. I, you know, I'd love to build a relationship with you. This is why I reached out to you. Then I will, depending upon the situation, but I'll, um, you know, I, I won't give a lot of value in that first video, but what I will say is I'd just love to know what your key focus is at the moment. You know, reading your profile, I think it might be this, but I'm guessing. I'd just love for you to tell me what your key focus is so, you know, I can help. And then the other thing is I'll bring up their contact information and they'll have their email there. So what I always do is send it on that email. And most times it's their Gmail, et cetera. I don't know why people don't have their right contact details on, but anyway, that's just a little pet peeve of mine. So I bring it up and say, I'm, I'm sending you this video on your personal. I'd love for you to reply back on your business email. And that's it. That's all I do. Now, in the software we have, there's some call-outs at the bottom. So I, for some people, I'll say, look, if you want to have a call, a 30 minute chat to tell me what your focus is. You can press that, the bookings below, or if you want to learn more. So I might give them a tip on a, on a LinkedIn or something. I'll say, just click there to get a, another value add video, but that's it. The one other thing I'll say is when you send the connection request, you put at the bottom, the PS is, you know, I, I normally say I'm looking to connect with high performing business owners. Would you be open to connect? Right, so it's a bit intriguing. They go to my profile to see what I've got. My profile tells them everything they need to know. I don't need to double handle that. And then at the bottom it goes, "P.S. I'll send you a personalized video on acceptance." Right, so they're already expecting the video. Then they get the video, and so far I think that's working exceptionally well. I've actually had, you know, normally with text messages you don't get any replies. I've actually had people going out of their way thanking me for the fantastic video that they've received this week. So it does work and it does make a big difference, we've found so far. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that. I know that that's gold, right? People can implement it. Uh, LinkedIn obviously is a very good platform to go to. And, you know, I so far I've been on Facebook a lot, but LinkedIn is yes. more and more interesting. And, yeah, uh, yeah. And, and we've got 70 people globally where we're learning all these things from. So I run a really big uh, community called The Sales Machine on that, and we're just all learning together, and then we apply those learnings. I'm sort of normally the scout, so I'm the one that's testing the most forward stuff, but then we've got other people in the group, and that's how we you know, uh, are getting really good at that. And, you know, that's that's existing client. And then, sorry, that's the new, but also the existing. Uh, just a quick one on that, which is the next step is just – you know, look at your 80-20. So are you spending your uh, time on the highest value clients, the clients that are going to get the best results and give you the best testimonials? And I know for me, by nature, I'm an over-servicer. So I'll help people when I know that it's at the opportunity cost of others. So really look at that. And also in Coke, we did a simple table of you know, all the things you could potentially sell and all your clients, and just fill in those gaps. There's always low-hanging fruit in your existing clients that you haven't sold them something that's going to get them value. So they're the probably two key things on uh, existing client analysis. Yeah, yeah, that's, and that's so true. If you're clear about the customer journey where you want to take them and what they will need, because you, you will not just come and dump your biggest package on them, <laughs> right? They probably need to have like more a few more smaller things where they see they're getting results and it's really working. And then you want to map out that journey. Like if you already got them to this point, what's the next point, right? A six figure business owner has different challenges than a seven figure business owner or eight figure, right? Every time we level up, there are new challenges. Some might look familiar, but they have a different quality and then there are brand new challenges. So how do you deal with them? 
Yes. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, quick recap, we've done marketing assets, sales growth mindset, new client prospecting existing. I'll just quickly go through a couple of these in a bundle to, to cognizance of time. So sales funnel. So everyone's got a different version of a sales funnel. But for me, the funnel that seems to be working really well at the moment is, you know, have some form of assessment like I talked about before at the front end. Then that typically takes them to a masterclass. So they can, and the masterclass isn't selling. It's just helping them understand how you help people. And then from there, that will go into a discovery call. I always split a discovery call and an investment call out. So that's the typical sales funnel when you're selling high ticket items, uh, service based. And you know the front of that is using LinkedIn to get them into those those funnels. Uh, offers table. It's really simple. Most people have too many offers, and they either have too many free or too many paid. So what we do is just do free to paid. And then have your attributes down and just be really clear on what's your 80 20 again in your your offers. And I know you said, you know, not everyone's going to buy a high ticket straight away, your ladder up, but I actually believe that it's really hard to upsell people. I think, you know, if people are ready to buy, sell them your highest ticket item and focus on that. I used to spend all my time on my sales machine which is, you know, circa three and a half thousand a year versus my one-on-one mentoring, which is 20,000 US for 12 weeks. And I was just shortchanging myself and clients. So there's that one. The last one I'll, I'll quickly mention to get some questions is a sales discovery process, which I've, I've covered, but we have a very prescriptive way of doing sales discovery. But I think the most important thing you spoke about before, understand what their, their personal win is out of this. You know, yes, they're going to go from one million to three million, but what will that do in changing their their uh, personal circumstances? I think you've really got to get to that. And the other thing in the sales discovery is let them make the choice. So what we do is go through those twenty nine points. They get a score out of a hundred, and let's say they're at fifty, then they know that they've got all of these things that they still need to do to get to that $2 million. And then it's up to them. They can either do it themselves or do it with you. So you're, you're just giving them the information for them to make the decision. Yeah. Something you said a little bit earlier about the sales calls really got my attention. You said discovery call and investment call. What do you you mean by that? Yeah. So the discovery call is what I just talked about is getting their personal information, really understanding, um, you know, where they are, what where they want to go, but most importantly, you know, what's what have what have they tried and what what do they think is is missing. So that's the discovery call. And then if you go through that gap, let's say they're at fifty percent, they realize that um, yes, they could do it by themselves, but they could more likely fast track it with a mentor like yourself or myself then you go to the investment call. And the investment call is really just taking them through exactly how it's going to work. So they're 100% clear on that choice between will I do it with myself, by myself, or will I do it with you? Okay. So basically in your discovery call, when you're going through their pain and where they want to go and their big dreams and vision, you're not making an offer at the end? No. No, especially, you know, for someone to invest $20,000, I want them to go talk to their key stakeholders, you know, and normally like for me, that's my wife, right? Uh, you know, I'm not going to make a 20000 decision on the spot. I want to go away, think about it, have some more information. And I'm, in the old world, it was like, you know, you had to close them on the call. These days, I, I don't think that's, um, that's right. If, if people really understand that you're a great option to help them, you know, the, They'll sign up on the next call. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I, I love how you, sp- you split that up. And it really depends on where people come in, if they are already working with you, right? So, for example, I do um, online summits. So yes. they might have experiments, experienced me like for, let's say, like 40 hours <laughs> interviewing people. And then they, they also feel like they already know me. Yes, so I think that's a difference. So if it's like somebody who is totally fresh to your world, then this makes so much sense to split those calls so they get clear in choosing you as a person. And then the next call is just on the, okay, how do we do it and what's involved? 
Yeah, and look, some people have said, look, Paul, I've been listening to you for two years on your podcast. I read all your material. I'm ready to go. And I'm like, okay, but I don't know if I'm ready to work with you. Mm. Right? So it actually works both sides because I want to make sure I can get everyone a result and I don't know that until I actually go through this process. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. That That's why I love doing the sales calls myself because I can really yes. also feel that person and you know, as, as coaches, we do spend a lot of our time or invest the better word, a lot of our time into our clients. So I want to make sure these are my soulmate clients where I know they take action, they get the results and they, you know, they don't discuss. <laughs> um, yeah. They just, they're just the perfect match. And that's a very good point to mention. It's not a one way road. It's too- Correct. And that's why we're on the, yeah. on the heart cells, uh, podcast uh i'll just if i just quickly go through the others because they're Mm -hmm. not as i think they're important but we've covered off the key points the the next one is uh channel partners i think you know one to many i think is absolutely critical so you can use linkedin and and what i found very easy is that if you say to someone this is my ideal client now so they may be your ideal client right but if you say this is my ideal client this is what i'm looking for have you got anyone in your network? By default, yes, you're selling to them, but you're also asking them to refer people, which takes the pressure if you do have a fear with sales. So I think that's a really good tip there. Uh, sales collateral, I think these days you've just got to have a professional dedicated sales pages and a, a proposal software. Sales systems, I could spend a whole podcast on this. My business that I sold last year, that's what we did. We actually implemented sales systems in agencies and service-based businesses. And, you know, ultimately just don't Excel or Google Sheet is not a sales CRM. For $49 these days, you can get incredible software. Just please go and and do that. It's, um, yeah, it's you're just making it so hard for yourself if you're not because you you will just miss follow-up. So you will just have money walk past your door if you try to do it manually. And the last one is that sales admin that I spoke to earlier, which is, you know, for me, you know, you can get VAs at all different prices around the world, you know, because of the clients that I mentor to, I've got lots of referrals, but, you know, 50% of sales is admin. So, you know, get an assistant to do that 50%. So I don't even go on my LinkedIn messenger box anymore. You know, I don't, there's so many things that I don't do because I'm best when I'm on Zoom calls with people, not doing everything else. Yeah, I totally hear you. And that's such an important advice to give. I really hope people are taking that in. So speaking of hard sells, what does hard sells mean for you? I think hard sells is when you know in your heart that you can't get someone a result but you still do it because you want the money. So that's my definition of a, of a hard sell. Um, you're, you're forcing a solution on someone knowing that in your heart, it's not the right thing for them. Yeah. And then let's turn it into the heart sell. What does that mean for you? Oh, sorry. Sorry. It was your... <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Uh, so the heart sell. I suppose that's what it is, right? It's the exact same thing. It is, you know, going with your heart rather than the emotion of I need money. It's like, can I really help this person? You know, is this absolute in the best interest for them? And make the decision based on that. You won't win every deal, but also you won't lie in bed, you know, wondering how you're going to get out of a situation you should never have got yourself in in the first place. Yeah, totally agree. Well, thank you so, so much, Paul. I just want to send people again to your beautiful assessment. So the question that will be answered is, will you have a low or high seven-figure service business in 2021? I highly recommend you take it. So you described that it's 15 questions. You can have it done in only three minutes and you get so much clarity out of it. So thank you so much for this wonderful gift. I'm really excited to share that with people. And yeah, thank you for another amazing episode where, you know, I was able to get some of your gold nuggets for the audience and you, you gave me some really great tips as well. So I'm already thinking about implementation, which is key. Otherwise, we just we are just dreamers. 
Um, is there anything you would love to leave us with for this episode? Yeah, so heart. So you talk about the heart. It's a little different. If you go back to the first episode, you'll hear more. But, you know, my best friend gave me a kidney. My mum, who I think she lasted more than 10 years on dialysis just to see me get a better result. So it was my best friend for 30 years that she'd known had given me that. And that has completely transformed my life. So if you're not an organ donor, I would highly recommend that you put your name down as an organ donor. From personal experience, the difference it makes to someone's life, I just can't tell you. So, yeah, if you're not, I'd, I'd love for you just to go and in, in, uh, put yourself down as an organ donor. Thank you so, so much, Paul. I really enjoyed speaking to you. Thank you for bringing so much wisdom and, yeah, golden nuggets. And I really hope people are implementing. I just love this episode with Paul. I love how he structured his four pillars to build a thriving business. Hop on over to christineschlonsky.com, find this episode, the show notes, the transcript, and also the resources where you can get Paul's amazing free gift and the Heart Centered Lead Generation Summit experience. Also, you can sign up for free over there. All the links to Paul are just one click away. And once you're over there, I want to invite you to celebrate Heart Cell's second birthday. So we are having a birthday week. The actual birthday is November 29. And you have an opportunity to be featured on Heart Cells. So if you want to hear your voice on Heart Cells podcast, hop on over to christineschlonsky.com, find the podcast tab, and there you will have the information, what you need to do to sign up so you can be featured on Heart Cells podcast. This is so amazing. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for being here. I really would love to celebrate you on the second birthday of Heart Cells because you, the listener, you are the one who is motivating me to do this. You are the one who sends in your feedback, your questions. You are the one who keep Heart Cells alive. So I want to celebrate with you. Hop on over to christineschlonsky.com, find the podcast tab and check out the celebration activities. We do a bunch of really, really cool stuff in a closed Facebook group, the Heart Cells community. In case you're not over there, you will find a link on the page. And then you are just invited to celebrate and we celebrate you at the same time. Check out all the interesting things we came up with to give you some amazing surprises. And all you need to do is hop on over to christineschlonsky.com and find the podcast tab. Have a wonderful day wherever you are in this world and I'm saying bye for now. Mm -hmm.